Rocky Horror define your life? Yeah, it certainly um, changed things. To have Rocky Horror as, as a calling card is wonderful, because I can, I can ring somebody, knock on somebody's door, and, and use that as an introduction, and get five minutes of their time. Nothing wrong with that, is there? Some people seem to think that uh, their success has become millstones around their neck, and I've never understood that. I think be very grateful for you know, things that come your way, happy accidents that come your way. But you never felt enormous pressure after Rocky that you had to do something else bigger and grander? No, Rocky's great as long as it's done well and the band's cooking and the jokes are falling at the right time and the people are in character and it's a theatre full of laughter. I mean, I, that makes me feel terribly good. Do you prefer the play or the film? I prefer the play because I get royalties from the play. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody gets royalties from movies except the producers and the, and, the, and, the, and the studios. They pat each other on the back and they wear dark glasses so you can't see the absence of moral light in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, and they, they enjoy each other for ripping people off. It's like you deserve to be raped because your skirt was too short, is, is, is the kind of philosophy. You know, you deserve to get pissed on because you're, too, you're dumb. And it's kind of, and you get treated and marginalised in such a, an arrogant kind of way while they're smiling at you. Hey, we're going to do a look, real look after you. It'll, it'll be great, you know. Yeah, that movie made over $365 million. It kept 20th Century Fox afloat for three years, that movie. And it's made a personal fortune for the producer that I was engaged with of, of about 20-odd million dollars. I've, if I've seen $1 million in that 30-odd period of time, I'd be very lucky and they don't care. They just don't care. They go, and yeah, and your point is what? Well, it's not fair, is it? You could become very embittered, couldn't you? If you were, you know, <laughs> that kind of person. But I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> because anyone who's seen the movie would just presume that you walked off with a You'd think you'd get a little cash. bit back for, for writing a stage show and then, oh. you know, co-writing the screenplay and then playing Riff Raff. You'd think you'd get you know, you'd get paid well, wouldn't you? No, you don't. Writers don't get any money. There's an old, old joke in Hollywood that the girl was so stupid that she screwed the writer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's kind of unfortunately true. <laughs> After the success, I mean, you're living over there, I mean, you, you, you had entree to all sorts of fascinating people. Who, who, who's impressed you the most? I like people who make me laugh, actually, truthfully. I like people who are fun to be with. And, uh, you know, you can go drinking with them and, and have a, tell dirty jokes to each other and whatnot. <laughs> I like those kind of people. I'm exceptionally childish, infantile almost. <laughs> and, uh, and I like that. I'm not ambitious, and I'm, I'm, I've never wanted to be rich or famous. I said that to someone recently, and he went, well, so what went wrong? <laughs> 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 but I can honestly say with my hand, I never wanted to be rich or famous. I, I, I just wanted to be an actor. And, and make believe and, and, and pretend to be somebody else and, and do it as well as I could so that everybody was watching, believed that I was this person. That's what I wanted to do. That was my craft and that's what I wanted to do. Who, I mean, what gives you the most pleasure? After defecation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, we, we took defecation as a given. <laughs> <laughs> Wake it up in the morning. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> that always works. <laughs> Go, hello, another day. Um, getting the Daily Telegraph and tackling the cryptic crossword, that gives me a great deal of pleasure. I, I, go, in, I go around the corner sometimes from my place and, I'm, and I get a, um, one of those greasy spoon breakfasts, the egg and chips and the baked beans and the bacon and a big cup of tea and have the paper and, and the crossword. I'm kind of in heaven there. That's, that's pretty damn good. Greasy breakfast. You've always been skinny? Um, I'm, I've actually put on a stone in weight in about the last four years. <laughs> I used to be eight stone nine my entire life, right up to about the age of 58. I was eight stone nine. Never, never varied. I had a 25-inch waist. We had a pair of trousers up when I was doing, I used to do a show in Great Britain on television called The Crystal Maze. And I used to wear these black skin-tight sprayed-on trousers and, and, and a pair turned up at my house the other day. And I held them up and the waist was there. <laughs> and they go, how? I don't understand how I got... I was, I was, I was uncannily thin. I was... <laughs> I was a beanpole. 
some of us only dream of even having own trousers that uh, wide yeah, in our past. <laughs> you, see, you see, it comes around, doesn't it? Because when I was 18 and my peer group grew up and they mm. filled out and they all became men and I was still kind of like seven and a half stone and, 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 and not short, about five foot seven at the age of 14 and only eight and a half stone. I used to get, I used to get people being so rude to me. Old, old people would be rude to me too. You know, they make jokes, the big, the big joke like, can you sing? Thought so, you got legs like a lark. You go, oh yeah, that's funny. You know, a young, awkward adolescent with pimples. God's really cruel, isn't he? Just when you come into a kind of sexual fruition, you know, he makes you the ugliest person on the planet. <laughs> you got spots, your voice is going up and down, you got bad breath, you know. And God decided to suck my chest in at the same time. You know, I could bring your ribs in, that'll screw you up. You'll like that, won't you? That'll make you, that'll give you confidence in the playground. You know, when I turned 40, you see, and I'm still kind of like Mr. Mr. Slim, snake hips, and all my peer group are now starting to pack it on a little. <laughs> you know, they go, how do you do it? And I say, my turn, fatty. <laughs> What about surgery, plastic surgery? Never thought of that? Plastic surgery, wonderful stuff. Yeah? God, it's improved a lot of people, hasn't it? <laughs> you know, some people are just plain ugly. I mean, <laughs> and now they look fantastic. I mean, look at, look, at, look at Ozzy Osbourne's wife. She looks fantastic. 10 years ago, you wouldn't have said, you know, times when I go, hello. <laughs> no, it's great stuff. I think if you can afford it and you like it, you know, get it done, why not? You've never been tempted? I, yeah, I'd do it, sure. What, what the hell? It's just like you've got, you've got a nice car. If, it, if there's a dent in the bumper, you'd mm -hmm. get it done, wouldn't you? you get it fixed. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's the same kind of thing. You go for glamour restoration as the main kind of thing, <laughs> <laughs> main job during the day. No, I have no problem with that. I, in fact, I find it's a bit like inverted snobbery, saying, so you take me like I am. You know, I'm not going to change for anybody. Oh, you're always going to be a miserable bastard, are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know, what the hell? We only live the one life. Enjoy it. If it doesn't work for you, then... I don't think Botox is necessarily a good idea for actors, do you? You know? <laughs> Expression? <laughs> I'm really happy to see you. <laughs> I'm overjoyed. <laughs> you know, it doesn't work, does it? The face is, you know, that's supposed to be the canvas, isn't it? But I'm going to get it done next week. <laughs> But you became famous not looking in the traditional mould, if I could put it that way. <laughs> you know, with the snake hips mm -hmm. and, the, and the, the bald head and everything. I mean, you weren't the traditional actor, no. writer look, were you? No, I suppose I wasn't really, no. I, never, I could never play a bank manager, could I? <laughs> <laughs> not really. They've never asked me on the bill, and every other actor in Great Britain's been on the bill. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would have been with the plain clothes division, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you about now? I mean, what's, I mean, we've talked about the uh, past. Next year we hope to have a, a musical on stage in, in England called The Stripper. I'd sing a song for it, but, um, but, I, but I, I don't really know many of them on the guitar. I could sing one without any tune. Could I do a sing a song without any music? A cappella? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 